During Ellen's reign in the mid-80s as the number one men's player, there was a woman in the WPRA putting together some astonishing numbers, too. Yes, Jean. And contrary to what some men believe, many people feel she's the greatest player of all time. Listen to this list of firsts in racquetball history. She was the first player, man or woman, to go undefeated in a tournament season. She was the first player to win two Triple Crown championships. She's also the first player to win six national championships. And as stated earlier, she's the only player to hold the number one ranking for seven years. The ultimate champion with a courageous story. Let's meet a special woman and my good friend, Lynn Adams. I was playing outdoor racquetball at Orange Coast College, a little three wall. And Jim Carson and I went to a pro stop at King's Court. And it used to be a big deal back then. Uh, you know, all the big time pros would come down and they'd have TV and, and uh, it was really exciting stuff. And we went to the very first one that was at King's. And we're sitting there watching. We saw Shannon Wright and Jennifer Harding and Marty Hogan and Davey Bledsoe. I mean, all the big guns at the time. And I'll never forget this. We were sitting there watching, I think it was Shannon and Jennifer Harding play. And almost at the same time, we both looked at each other and said, I can do this. So at that time, uh, we just kind of brainstormed, uh, Jim and I brainstormed about what it would take to be a professional and decided that it, you, you either had to go for it, you just, you just couldn't piecemeal it. You know, you needed to do the whole thing. So I stopped going to school and I quit my, my job at the Beachcomber and just kind of dove in. And uh, God, what a blast. It's just been a blast. Jim Carson, what a guy. I ended up with a coach and a boyfriend all in the same man. And uh, it's, it's been an incredible relationship. Uh, we both view this whole career as our career because we have talked so much about all of the game and the ins and outs of it and the strategies of it and uh, once we were married I mean we'd be laying in bed talking about racquetball before we'd go to sleep gosh he had to put up with a lot of stuff for me because I was this extremely emotional out of control person um, to put it mildly and it's funny because people who know me now that have only known me with say within the last I'd say eight years or so, don't really know that side of me. Um, but when I very first started playing, winning was such an obsession and so important that if I didn't, that I would lose it. I think more than anything else that we ever worked on together, both for my racquetball career and for my personal life, I would pick that one thing as the best gift that Jim ever gave me was learning how to focus myself and take all of this neat stuff that I have that I might not have been able to control and learn how to channel it so that I can do good things for myself instead of bad things for myself. Um, the, the first nationals that I played in, it was in Tempe, Arizona. And the big rumor was that this woman who came out of squash, Heather Mackay, was going to come and play in the Nationals. So there's a lot of buzzing going on at the tournament about this Heather Mackay woman and just the squash champion and Charlie Drake had taken her you know, into a DP and that Marty Hogan was training her and Charlie Brumfield was training her. And I, I just thought, oh gosh, this is great. Somebody else is coming in new. This woman must be something else. To this day, Heather Mackay is still one of my biggest heroes in, in any sport. I have never ever come across a female athlete that I would hold on a higher level than Heather Mackay. When Heather left the game, I had to reassess my goals so that I didn't let my skill level drop at the same time. So I would work more on, a goal became to play the perfect match and the perfect season. So actually practices got a lot more intense um, a lot more focused uh, than they ever were before. And I got close a couple times. I did have the undefeated season. I got to have that once. 
I got close three other times where I only lost once during the season. Um, but I got, I did get that goal. Oh gosh, it's, it's just like this wonderful complete circle that I got to have that probably most athletes don't get to have. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to get kind of misty when we talk about this. Um, shoot. <laughs> To have the opportunity to come into the sport and have just the joy of starting at nothing and working up to the top and getting to, to have the experience of learning from somebody who has been such a pro for so long. I mean, going back to her squash days um, and the, all the experiences that go with that and the experience of getting to dominate a sport. Um, which was very exciting. It was such a thrill. And then to see myself in the form of Michelle Gilman coming in, and I just look at Michelle with so much passion for the game. You know, and I, I get to take the role almost of the Heather Mackay looking down at the rookie and just going, I don't know if I can keep up with all this energy. And yet at the same time, it has... I think she's given me a life a year or so longer than I might have had if she hadn't come into the game. I hate it that she beats me, though. <laughs> it totally bums me out. The match is over. Never will you see a more tremendous match. Better skilled players than these two right here. Both of them true champions. Yeah, I, I was doing some clinics in Wisconsin, and it was real cold and snowy, and... Um, my hand started getting kind of tingly. It was almost like it was chapped, numb a little bit. And I was having problems holding on to the grip. And uh, it wasn't like it scared me or anything. I just really, it just bugged me and I didn't know what it was and I wanted to find out what it was. It, it never occurred to me that it would be something that would be long lasting. I just thought it was something that was going to go away as soon as we found out what it was. And I had, we had a tournament in California, a pro stop in California, and I played in the tournament, and I was just a mess. I mean, I couldn't feel my feet. My feet were totally numb. My hands were totally numb. So I couldn't feel myself moving around the court, and I couldn't feel the racket in my hand. Well, my father has some, some uh, neuro neurological problems, so he had a neurologist. So it's, okay, let's go to this neurologist. And at that time, he said... What you have is you have some holes in your myelin sheath, which is the protective covering that goes around the, the nerves that are running up and down in the middle of your spine. So he said, your nerves are exposed, basically. So when you do a lot of physical activity and move around, all your nerves are getting battered around inside of your spine, and that's causing all this tingling sensation. So what you have to do is you have to totally stop all physical activity until the swelling goes down, and then see what happens as to whether you play again. Um, well, that was kind of intense. I mean, I was, I was at the height of my career at that time. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was like, well, you might not play. You may play, you might not. Who knows? Well, it became a process over th three years. I mean, I was still doing this process uh, up, up till this past, the end of last season of learning how to deal with my body. Because the more physical activity I would do, the more tingly I would get. Uh, I couldn't do any physical activity if I wanted to be on the court. Because the only thing that I could, that my body could handle was about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe three or four times a week on the court. And I think that I've become a smarter player because of it. Um, I, I've just, learned how to pick up on people's weaknesses a lot faster. Um, I think I can read myself a lot better now than I ever did before of what I can and what I can't do. Um, it was just this incredible challenge to do. Well, I, I won the, the Nationals and was the number one player the first year after the break. Uh, the next year after that, Karen McKinney and I had this very exciting season of I'd win one tournament, she'd win one tournament, I'd win one tournament, she would win one tournament. Um, and when we went into the Nationals, we were dead even in points, and it came down to whoever went the farthest in that tournament would be the number one player. And we played in the 
in the finals, and she won it. So I was number two the second year. Uh, the third year, I ended up number one again, and then last year, uh, I ended up losing to, to Michelle, 11, 8 in the, in the tiebreaker. Well, in the summertime, um, I started having some tingling problems again and started getting some double vision to the point where I, I couldn't see anything anymore, and I was getting real nauseous and, and uh, real disoriented. So I went and saw my neurologist again, and we redid all the same tests that we did before. And he said, you know, I, I think you should be ready for the fact that I think that when these tests come out, you're, you have multiple sclerosis. And he showed me my files from when I had gone in almost five years previous to that time. And he had written in there, I'm pretty sure I'm dealing with an MS patient but I'm not going to call it that until she has a second attack and I can run another set of tests whenever that may be. So he knew almost five years previous that all the stuff that was going on was most likely multiple sclerosis. And I think that was very, very wise on his part not to say that. Um, and who knows if that had been in my head whether that would have changed anything or not. I don't know. I mean, the person that I am today is, is a direct reflection of all of those years of experiences put together. I mean, I've had 13 years, almost 14 years of racquetball. That has been so much of how I've learned about my life and how I want to live and the kind of person I want to be. And now that part is over, and now I get to go live all the things that I've learned. Not that I'm going to stop learning, but... That has been my school.